Today we're starting a series that will be called um, relationship goals. I constantly correct people when they hashtag relationship goals and I tell them that someone's marriage shouldn't be your goal they should be your guide because you're putting a ceiling if you're making them your goal come on somebody amen and so we need to make him our guide not our goal but because it's a culturally acceptable term today we decided to name this series this way today the message is going to focus to all the singles so for those of you who are married please don't walk out yet this is you can take some notes for your single friends and send them that. Today is going to be incredible. We're going to talk about a message that will be called dating without fornicating. Come on, come on. Amen. So let's open our Bible to Genesis chapter 2 and the reason why I want us to go to Genesis by looking at the example for the single people and for dating, the reason I want to go to, the, to Genesis is because if you are looking for a good example of how to find a spouse in the Bible, uh, there's really bad examples in the Bible. Bible is the Word of God but it has some bad examples. For example, the way David found a wife is he killed a hundred something people. Don't do that or you will get a wife and also prison sentence. You know other guys they had a beauty pageant you know and you don't have the money for that and stuff. So there's a lot of ways in the Bible of how people found spouses they just won't work for us in the century. But when the Jesus was asked the question about divorce Jesus made a reference to Pharisees and he says in the beginning it was not so. Meaning we get our clues of how God's blueprint for relationships and our life from God's, from the Genesis before the sin came in. You don't want to get the clues from Solomon because you're going to end up having multiple wives and we'll go to jail for that. We want to get our clues from the beginning, first few chapters of the Bible. Is everybody with me? So we go to Genesis chapter 2 and in Genesis chapter 2 verse 20 it says the following. I want us to read together on the count of three. One, two, three. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. Amen. Your scriptural reading for today is done. Awesome. For those of you who didn't do Bible reading plan today, you already did it with us together. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I'm going to share with you um, three points that will deal with people who are in relationships or about to go into relationships. The first one is, before we go there, in the beginning before Adam was introduced to his wife, Adam first was introduced to God and he was placed in the Garden of Eden. So before you find a wife you have to find your master. Somebody say master. It means you have to have a relationship with God. Adam knew his master. And Adam was in the garden. So not only you have to have a relationship with God, you got to be planted in the local church. See many people go around looking for a spouse and in the Bible some men found their wives by the well. And if you're not careful and you're not planted in the garden of God, you might find your wife at the wrong well. Are you with me? And so Adam had a relationship with God. It's interesting because Adam had no church and Adam had no pastor but Adam had a voice. He knew the voice of God and he had the presence of God in his life. And so the most important thing about our Christian life is that we have to first get anchored in our God because if you're not anchored in God you will always want your spouse to take the place of God. You will want them to love you unconditionally. You will want them to be with you always to heal you, to fix you and you will quickly realize there is a God and his name is not your spouse and that's why it has to be a relationship with God. Come on somebody. Secondly is after Adam had a relationship with God, Adam knew his mission. Before a woman came on the scene, Adam had a job. J-O-B. No money, no honey. The challenge we have in our generation is we have a lot of people looking for spouses who are unemployed. 
and using their parents plastic to pay for dates or asking the girl to hey could you cover a wife just currently no job no job no dating and you don't have to have the best job in town you don't have to have your dream job Adam was actually tending the garden so if you're mowing the lawn you're just like Adam no shame in that it's a job it pays for bills and you're working amen and then the lady never be embarrassed of somebody who works hard I had a because you got to be after a man not after his wallet gold diggers my I have an uncle and my uncle is he's, he's, he's very wealthy and uh, he was interested in this particular young lady and he knew that he wasn't sure about if she was interested in him or interested in what he of what she might discover that he has and he has he has money a lot of money and so instead of uh, going on a date in a fancy restaurant he pulled in on this beaten up rig and asked her to go to McDonald's she like you know flipped out walked out and she never knew she had no idea who this guy was but because she was judging him based on what he came and what he and I don't recommend you to, to, to go on the first date to McDonald's come on uh, you know it's just because the girl is she's a health freak <laughs> she's not gonna go there not because of the money it's because of your health decisions but the point being is that you got to be a person that's after the person not after their resources or after their money and as a man and as women we have to be the ones that we first prioritize our mission we prioritize our career after God Jesus never called somebody to follow him who was sitting doing nothing and looking for a job he always called men who were already fishing a guy who was already doing taxes people were already doing something one of the reasons young people fall into a lot of sin is because they have too much free time on their hands you will see one thing is that the, the reason why David fell into adultery is that David woke up in the evening when he was sleeping all day and Joseph the Bible says he went into the house of Potiphar to do work that's why he had no time to mess around with sin because he was busy come on somebody so Adam knew his master, second one is Adam had a mission and the third one is Adam met his mate. Means that's, that's when God provided to him a help mate. As someone that supported him in, and also they were partners together in what God called them to do. And so as we're looking today and how Adam found the person that he was with, I want us to notice a few simple insights into that. Number one, if you need to date, then you're not ready for date you are ready to date when you don't need to now I want you to notice this about Adam is that when Adam was so in the so deep in the presence of God that it was God who came to Adam and told Adam it's not good for you to be alone it wasn't Adam who came to God and said God I'm lonely it was God who came to Adam and says Adam you're alone and Adam I could imagine replied back to God he said what does that mean God I don't understand are you trying to get rid of me I've been enjoying our walks together every day God I enjoyed the the, the, the garden of Eden and you're saying that oh God what are you trying to say God says Adam we've been enjoying our time together but Adam you need someone in your life God wants you to be so lost in him that he has to tell you you need to get married <laughs> come on somebody or your parents or your pastor or your mentors if you are 14 years of age or 15 years of age and you're over there you're praying and fasting God send me a boyfriend you need deliverance you need revival you need to pray and fast you need to go in God first come on somebody are you with me you have to be so lost in God that the other person has to look for God to find you not to the club not to Christian singles ready to mingle.com but they have to go to God to find you because you're so lost in God. Adam was so lost in God that God was enjoying time with Adam and he said Adam I really I really love this thing that we have going but dude you, you, you need a life bro. You, you need someone else in your life. I want to break a stereotype over our mind and the mind that some people have it's set up by religion that if you get close to God, God will never let you have fun religion teaches that God is anti-love God is anti-fun God is anti-romance God is one of those he's like this jealous boyfriend 
the closer you get to him and he consumes everything around you. He's like, I'll take this, I'll take this, I'll take this. Why? I saw how you looked at that. I'll take it. Give it to me. God is not like that. God is a generous God. Jesus came to give life and more abundantly, not take, steal and kill and destroy. He's a good God. Can somebody say amen? I struggled with this idea when I was younger because every time I heard the testimony, it almost felt like always that people shared that the closer I got to God, the more He took from me. And I was like, man, I want to be careful with God. I don't want to get too far. I don't want to get too close because I do want to get married one day. I do want to drive a nice car one day. I do want to, you know, I do want to have few little things but the Bible doesn't teach us this. Bible says that if you're willing and obedient, you will eat of the good of the land. God has your best interest. God is not against you. Are you with me? What God is against is not love but lust. And many times we who are not mature in relationships don't know the difference between love and lust because lust is the devil's substitute for love and love and lust from a side could actually look the same just like water and alcohol but they taste different love and lust might even feel similar but they have different effects and they have different results i'm going to read to you the difference is that lust is selfish love is sacrificial lust seeks isolation see lust loves sneakiness sneaking out hiding lust loves to find things that make sure nobody finds this out because you know that this is wrong lust loves the forbidden things love loves community lust forces sex love initiates marriage lust will say if you love me you will love will say if you love me you'll get a job buy a ring put a finger put a ring on the finger and take me to the altar come on somebody lust hurts that's why people cry they, they get heartbroken love it heals lust does not last love grows with time lust is like a gasoline you pour over something Whew, big flames and 60 seconds nothing like Amnon he loved Tamar he loved her so much he got sick love never will make you sick remember that lust will and then when he finally took her virginity he raped her because that's what lust does lust forces sex see in our generation there is the hashtag me too movement you know the root cause of that movement you know what the root cause of all the victimizing of the women and all the rapes and all the molestation in our generation is lust how much stuff is never even people never even had the audacity to share we're so happy for those who are finally coming out and saying this is what's going on but the root of that is lust because lust forces things and lust hurts and the bible says that that man lust it, it doesn't last and that man after he took the virginity of tamar the bible says he hated her with greater hate than he loved her how could you go in one hour loving somebody so bad that you got sick to hating somebody that you couldn't stand them? Because love grows, lust goes like this. Are you with me? Lust gets punished, love gets rewarded. Why am I sharing this? Because if relationship is based on lust, that relationship will not last are you with me and that's why many people in our generation they need to in order to find what love is you don't look for a boyfriend and you don't look for a girlfriend you look for somebody who stretched his hands on the cross because that is what love is that's where you find love when you're living in lust you will look for love in all the wrong places relationship is not a place you find love it's a place you share love and you typically will attract somebody just like you looking for love it's like both of you are people who are twenty thousand dollars in debt and you're looking for a miracle both of you are not going to fix each other you're only going to be a problem to each other 
but when you find God when you find his presence when you find inner healing when you go through deliverance when you go through counseling when you go through mentorship something happens you become so whole inside you become cured inside that now you don't go into marriage trying to fix something you go into marriage to be a blessing to someone many people are looking for a relationship but only can be found in a rehab some people are looking in romance what only can be found in deliverance some people are looking in marriage what only can be found in counseling and inner healing oh he makes me whole are you nuts are you crazy it's because you don't know them the moment you get to know them he won't make you whole he'll reveal your holes inside he'll drive you crazy why because relationships will make you holy before they make you happy they'll expose stuff they don't fix stuff if they would fix stuff God will never send Jesus on the cross he will send you and me are you with me and we have to understand is that if you are hurting if you've been abused, if you grew up without a father, if maybe you got hurt in your past or maybe you've never been affirmed, your self-esteem has not been built and fostered, you are bleeding and dating is like a sea full of sharks. Don't go swimming if you're bleeding. Get healed first because you will always attract a shark instead of a helpmate. And many people say, well, why is this all the wrong boys are being attracted to me? Are you bleeding? Because sharks smell blood. But the good men and good women, they also discern because you attract you. You don't attract how you dress. You attract who you are. And therefore we need healing first before we need dating. Otherwise we'll look in dating what only Jesus, counseling, mentorship and deliverance can provide. Can I get an amen in this house today? When, when many people settle for less than what God has prepared for them and I do not want to by any means discriminate against anybody or to tell them that there are people that are that are not really good or second class but what I mean is there are people who sell themselves cheap in a relationship and this is why because you can't have high standards with low self-esteem. One of the reasons, and some of you, you're married like, man, I wish somebody would have told me that earlier. Sit there tight. Don't look at your spouse right now. Just look right at the front. Everything is going to be okay. Next, next week, we'll fix the marriage issue. Today, we'll just expose stuff. When you have a low self-esteem, you tend to sell yourself always cheap. Amen. If your car is salvage, you can't sell it for the same price that someone who has exactly the same car who has a clean title. When in your mind, not outside, not how you look, not your degree, not your experience, but inside, if you feel salvaged, rebuilt, second class, you will always sell yourself short. You will always settle for anything that comes along. Why? Because you know, well, nobody's gonna marry me. Get rid of the stinking thinking, get rid of the salvage title from the glove box of your mind and feel yourself that I'm a new creation. I can do all things through Christ. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am made by God and daddy, my daddy is the king of the universe. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you Jesus. Number two, I want us to write down not only that we need to be healed before we date but secondly is you will wait for God to bring the right person or you will wait for God to change the wrong person you choose so let's look go back to Adam not only Adam waited for God to tell him that he needed to find a spouse but secondly when God sent him on the mission of a spouse hunting there was no websites at the time eHarmony was not invented at the time yet there were, there was options Adam had very limited options and God sends him on the assignment to name the animals in hopes that Adam might find something that looks close to him and something that he might like so Adam went around naming all the animals you know big animals small animals and at the same time he was looking out for someone that might match him and the closest thing that Adam found that matched him was a monkey aren't you glad 
Adam didn't bring monkey to God and say God I know the best we could find but you're the God of miracles fix this never date someone you're hoping for God to fix if you're already hoping but I love him he's so funny he's so like he's so built but did you see his car did you see the muffler but she's so hot I mean she was the cheerleader she's she's so popular did you see how many followers she has on Instagram she got a PhD she got masters I, I know she's smoking I, I know he's on drugs I know he's sleeping around with other women but listen but God we see he's the God of miracles. he can move the mountains missionary dating is popular but it's not scriptural God doesn't ask you to flirt to convert he can do the converting himself you don't have to do that if you are hoping for God to fix that person this is a red flag already it's not from God Adam could have done that Adam could have brought an animal to, to, to God a, a monkey say God there's just few more classes a little hair removal and just just few plastic surgeries and this will be a perfect maid Adam says you know what I can bring a monkey or I can this my amazing God he can bring someone who already he worked on not someone that I need to hope for him to change are you with me In the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 39, it says the following, A wife is bound by the law as long as, she, as, as long as her husband lives. But if her husband dies, she is at liberty to marry, uh, she is at liberty to be married to whom she wishes only in the Lord. I, wanna, I want you to see the teaching of the New Testament about how to find a spouse. How liberal and how freeing this is. Paul is saying that if and this doesn't just apply to a woman who lost her husband this applies also to single people you are at liberty somebody say liberty you are at liberty to marry whomever you wish it's interesting Paul didn't say whoever God chooses for you God doesn't choose for you God presents and you choose and to have this idea that there is that one special person do you know who that one special person the one you marry but I just want to not miss that one. I just want to come to God and say, God, give me the best, the best of the best Christian girl. It's like coming to a father who has six daughters and say, and say, could you give me your best daughter? He's going to slap you. He's going to say, all of my daughters are the best. Amen. So when, you, when you're coming to God and you say, Lord, give me the best one. Remember, the rest of them are also his daughters. So he's not happy about the fact that you're discriminating against the rest of them and God is saying you are at liberty to marry and this is what the father who has six daughters will tell you he says that's not every one of them is special to me but which one do you like so God is saying you are at liberty to, ma to be married to whom you wish as long as it's opposite sex and this is the second prerequisite only in the Lord not Republican Party they believe in God Muslims believe in God everybody believes in God in the Lord meaning it has to be not only do they believe in God they have to follow Jesus Christ and so I want you to see that God makes it a rule for us as believers and this is not discrimination against other faiths this is actually respect to other faiths because if you are here today and you're not following Jesus Christ and maybe you have somebody that you're dating or you're liking who is a Christian. I'm going to disclose a secret they don't want you to know. They like you, but they're praying for you. They're believing for your deliverance. They're believing for your eyes to be open and you, for you to sign up for prayer line. They're secretly putting you on prayer lists. Every kind of prayer list they can get so you will really genuinely get saved. I know you think they're really into you. No, they're into the kingdom of God and they want to use you to, for you to get there too. You're a project. Leave your Christian date. Drop them like a hot potato. 
because it's not fair for Christians and non-Christians to date. Why? Because it's not fair because we're pulled in different directions and God is not discriminating against unbelievers. He just simply says it's not fair for them, it's not fair for you. Choose someone in the Lord. Will they come to church? You know I've been going to Starbucks for so long. I has never really been made into a caramel macchiato. Coming to church doesn't make you a Christian. In the Lord. Are they in the Lord? Come on somebody. I want you to see what Apostle Paul is saying. He says in 2nd Corinthians chapter 6, he says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness. And Paul is underlining the same thing. Is that for a believer, and this is why Adam, he did not hook up with the donkey, with the monkey or the donkey or the elephant or the snake or some other crazy animals because he's like you know what we're not comparable we're not comparable I know God can do the surgery but I also know that God doesn't need me to make foolish mistakes the same God who can change them is the same God who can bring me someone who is changed come on somebody amen I want to just right now show you uh, six signals red flags that you have to pay attention to to avoid ending up with someone who is not comparable to you. The first one is when you start dating without getting over your ex. You typically are going to make a wrong decision anytime you're going into the relationship with someone and you didn't take at least 12 months for separation emotionally and with your heart to disconnect completely. One of the biggest mistakes people make is that they when the relationship ended and things didn't work out they right away look for a band-aid to put a healing on that hurt hurting heart and they go to the next relationship. In reality they're not looking for love they're looking for healing. And so the person that you might be dating is actually, you're not dating them, you are their band-aid. Until they truly recover and when you recover, you usually throw away the band-aids. And they'll dump you the same way they dump the other. Why? Because they needed you during the healing and you get hurt. You're like, man, but I thought they loved me. They were hurting. And you were so insecure because you have nothing going on in your life. So you were really like, oh, they need me. Makes me feel good. Your identity is not supposed to be in the fact you need it. But in the fact you're loved by God. Come on somebody. When an instrument stops playing music, the strings do not get disconnected right away. When a relationship ends, that does not mean the strings are detached. It takes minimum from 6 to 12 months for your emotions to bounce back. Most of wrong relationships I've seen and you will witness. And if you've ever made a mistake, you will find out this rule was broken. People break up and two months later, they quickly go into some other relationship instead of taking time to pause what went wrong. To pause and to ponder so that their heart gets healed. So they don't go into a band-aid, but they go into something that God called them to do. Number two is when you date someone who believes in God, but they don't follow Jesus Christ. Believing in God is not enough. Demons believe in God and they're still going to hell. And they not only believe in God, the Bible says they tremble. The person you're dating don't even tremble. They just believe in God. So it's better to date a demon because demons at least tremble. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to date a demon. You want to date somebody that God has for you. Are you with me? And for that to happen as a Christian, you got to look not only, do, not only do they believe in God, do they follow Jesus Christ. A statistic says that a divorce is sliced in the half for those people who have these three things in common. They go to the same church together. They share the same theology, meaning if you believe in speaking in tongues, they believe in speaking in tongues. Because if they believe in miracles and the other one doesn't believe in miracles, you're going to have friction. And so they have same theology. So divorce rate is completely different for those who go to the same church, who believe in the same theology. And thirdly, they practice their faith outside of the walls of the church. So they're not just Catholic on Sunday and alcoholic on Saturday, but they're practicing their faith. And, and there are many Christians who do the same thing. 
They come on Sunday, ah oh, Jesus and they do exactly the same moves on the club on Friday. That's not, that's gonna, you're gonna fall into the same statistic as the world because you're no different than the world. The only difference you just put a spiritual makeup and a cover on but you're a fake Christian. But when you marry a genuine believer and you are a genuine as well and these three things are in place, your relationship is not gonna be like the rest of the relationship even in church because you go under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Can somebody say Amen. How to avoid ending up with the wrong person. The third one is when you ignore your gut. Your gut, when your gut tells you to Oh, okay, let's just focus on the number three then. When you expect a marriage to fix the person. And I already kind of mentioned that. How to avoid ending up with the wrong person is to don't and don't marry someone, don't even date someone that you're hoping will change after you get married. And guys can be such a liars. I will change. I'll stop dealing drugs. Just get married to me. Listen, if they never stop dealing drugs because of Christ, you are not Jesus. They'll never stop, do, stop doing anything for you. The only reason I'm looking at porn is because I don't have intimacy in my life. But when we get married, I promise, porn will be out of the window. The reason why you look at porn is because you're looking at porn. Period. Oh, the only reason why I'm still doing this, I'm hanging out with my old friends is because I'm doing, no, 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 no. Never marry someone who promises to change after you get married. A side note. Marriage don't change people. Marriage reveals people. If the person you are with has a messy car, they can only change temporarily so that you will go on the dates with them. But when you marry, the car will be more messier than you ever seen in your life. They will drive worse than they ever drove in their life. Because now they got you. They don't have to, they don't have to pursue you. They can relax and be who they are, whom you thought they'll change. Are you with me? Number four, when your gut tells you this is not right. When you are in a relationship and you have no peace about it and your gut says run, not after them, from them. And there's one thing about your peace. There's no one thing about your heart and your consciousness. You, you can shut people down. You can block people on your phone. You can never go to your parents house because they're reminding you that you're making wrong decisions. You can switch churches because you know that the pastor doesn't approve that you're doing what you're doing. You can do whatever. You can run from everyone. You can't run from yourself. And see and God uses your spirit and your conscience as a communication point. The spirit of a man is a lamp of the Lord. It means if God wants to get the message across, He troubles you. He gives you no peace. He creates tension. That's why I tell single people pay attention to your tension. Because it's the way God might protect you. It's the way that God might guide you in your relationship. Don't ignore your conscience. Don't ignore the fact that you don't have peace about it. Look, but everything looks right, but it feels wrong. And the women especially, they got that feeling worked up so good. If a woman says that you can expect trouble. I would try, I would, I would encourage every woman here, follow your intuition. If your intuition is submitted to the Holy Spirit. Now if your intuition is not submitted to the Holy Spirit, then submit it to the Holy Spirit. Because if you follow your gut, but your gut doesn't follow your gut, then you will end up in a rut. Are you with me? The Bible says don't follow your heart. Why? Because our heart has to be submitted to God. We follow God. But God uses sometimes our heart to communicate to us. I know Oprah says that you have to follow your heart. My God tells us to follow the Lord. And because I'm following the Lord, He's able to communicate to me by taking away my peace so that I could pause and ponder and see, could it be a different way that I might go? Are you with me? Number five, how to avoid ending up with the wrong person is that when your mentors don't support you in this. Now there are mentors in your life and there are tormentors in your life. I'm not talking about the haters right now. 
I'm talking about the people who love you, people who genuinely care for you and you meet with them or people that you respect, people that are, are not just going to be like you know whoever says they agree with popular opinion but they'll tell you the truth even if you don't like it. They're, they're not winning your approval. They know that they already won that and they will give you the feedback. They won't reject you for that. They will just simply say you know what? I don't know why I just, I just, if they say I just, this is a time to go pray and fast. This is a time to simply say, you know what God? That's it because they might be seeing something you don't. They might be seeing something you will only see six months after you got married and you realize maybe it's too late. You got to pay attention. The Bible says in the multitude of counselors there is safety. I know some people here you watch too much of Romeo and Juliet and so we, we have this thing where in our culture where the more people are against this the more romantic it is, the more sexy it is because we watch so much Hollywood, it's like yeah everybody's against it. Awesome, this is where the real love is. Let me tell you something about relationships that everyone is against. When everybody starts being for it is when you lose the love. Because that love is not based on each other, it's only based on the fact you are in opposition to everyone. And that's where that love is. I've seen relationships where they die the day everyone stopped being against them. Because the only to defend that love is the fact that you had to fight against the world. And the moment you don't have to fight against the world, you begin to fight against each other. A gentleman uh, that was getting married here, um, won't mention his name. And uh, he, when he was a teenager, uh, he had few um, infatuations with some people that his mentors were not supporting. Well, the Lord wasn't supporting. His mentors were not supporting. He wasn't even in support of that. He just was a little bit infatuated. And, uh, but he was obedient to the Lord and he didn't pursue any of those relationships. They were not good for him. And then finally a time came, he finished his education and he fell in love and he was pursuing this person and they were about to get married. And I remember he told me something that stuck with me. He said, this feels weird. And I said, how so? I was like, are you getting cold feet? He said, no, 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 no. He said, nobody's against me. <laughs> I was like, it's because you're not in high school. I was like, because you, you're not... You're not trying to go against the world. He's like, is this normal that like the pastor is for it, that the parents are for it, the circumstances are falling into place and I said this is the right way and whatever you were doing in high school was not a right way. Come on somebody, are you with me? And number six, when there is no mutual attraction, it might be a wrong relationship for you if you're not mutually attracted to each other. Attraction is not the most important but it's important. I know in some cultures attraction doesn't matter. Isaac married Rebecca, never even seen her, never even had a chance to like her. He saw her for the first time. He was, she was introduced as his wife. He's like, well, it is what it is. <laughs> and the Bible says he loved her. For most of us, we don't live in the culture where parents choose marriage for you based on how the businesses will go. <laughs> you have a chance to choose someone based on your attraction that you have for them. It's very important that you don't choose someone based just on their education, based just on their appearance or based on how the kids will turn out. You know how girls do that. They're like, they're already, a fourth dimension is like, well our kids will look like this and stuff. Yeah, here's the pick. I don't like him but we'll have good kids. They'll make, the kids will make up for the, the fact we don't have no flow here. If a lady gets married to a guy and she knows he has no attraction for her, it causes her insecurities to go through the roof. When a guy gets married to a lady and he doesn't have the attraction, the lust that he already fights with, it becomes a lot harder to overcome. And so I challenge people that if you are in a dating relationship and there is no attraction, listen, turn it to the friendship and, and don't pursue any further because attraction is very important. If you don't have it now, the chances of that having later, sometimes God does miracles, but it's better to lead those miracles to someone else. Amen. Are you with me? And we're going to bring this message to, to toward the end. I want you to share the last point. Waiting on God is allowing God to take something out of you before he brings someone to you. So we see that with Adam is that Adam not only that God tells him I want you to go look for a wife and then Adam looks for someone he can't find it he waits for God. But I want you to see that God brings the person to Adam by not just Adam wasn't just in a prayer room. Adam wasn't just waiting idle. Waiting on God is allowing God to work on you. 
God went into the surgical room and started to surgically remove things out of Adam. This was, this was painful. This was action. See waiting on God, the problem with the young generation that we have today is that many people while they're waiting, they're fornicating. They know they won't be end up with that person. They say, you know what, why don't we just simply begin to flirt. Let's just begin to stir up feelings within them that you know you shouldn't be doing. Leading them on on something that you know you have no interest of being with the person. You don't see future with the person. If you don't see the future with the person, there is no need to mess up with their feelings. There is no need to sext. There is no need to develop emotional attachments. There is no need to message them at 2 in the morning through Snapchat. There's no need. I'm going to share with you a secret that I was taught when I was a single person. The way you act as a single man is the way you will act as a married man. And when I was single, this is not to brag about myself, but this area of my life was under control. You wouldn't find me driving with another woman. You wouldn't find me going on a coffee with another woman. Now you can call me strange, you can call me weird, whatever you can call me. But the habits I developed as a young man, I lived in purity toward single ladies and I wasn't leading no one on and these habits they stayed with me when I was a married man. When I am a married man. My God I can get in trouble today in this room. Jesus. Guys it's the English is my third language. Okay come on help me out. It's not intentional. Amen. I don't have to work on being pure in my relationships with other women. I don't have to discipline myself not to text girls randomly because I didn't do that when I was 16. I won't do that now when I'm 31. Listen to me young man. You may give yourself a freedom to sex, to text and to cool because you're single and you, you say I'll change when I get married. Let me tell you something. You won't. And your spouse will struggle. It's better to right now act like a man not like a boy. The Bible says, blessed is the man who finds a wife, not a woman. That means the woman is already acting like a wife. She's already acting. She is not chilling with the boy. She's not just simply till two in the morning to every single dude that has nothing to do but to text back and forth. She doesn't Snapchat herself from different position to expose what her mama gave her. She doesn't do that. Why? Because she's a wife now even though she doesn't have a husband yet and one day she will have a husband. Come on somebody. Be a wife before you become a wife. I mean you treat your relationships with purity. That means that every boy and every guy that you hang out they know there, there's, there's guardrails. Why? Because you're taken. No not like the movie taken but like taken by Jesus and the Holy Spirit taken. Are you with me? And so we see that Adam he goes to sexual sleep and when you are waiting in order for God to work on you you have to sexually go to sleep. To sexually go to sleep doesn't mean you have to sexually die. It doesn't mean your hopes and dreams are gone. It just means you don't invoke emotions in other people. You don't lead other people on and you don't do this thing we're just talking which means we're doing everything the married people do. The only thing we don't have is I don't have his last name. That's what exactly talking means in our culture today. It just means when you are waiting, you are sexually asleep. You don't come to church to just to look for somebody. You come to church, you come to other places and you focus on God. And as you're sexually asleep, you're spiritually awakened and God is beginning to do things in your life and in your character. And why is God wanting to do that? I want you to write this down. Because the key of finding the right person is first being the right person. See many of us we're like well I, I don't like who's, who, who likes me. I don't like who's attracted to me. I don't like the fact uh, one girl said all the Christian guys are like church parking lot. The best ones are taken, the rest are left are handicapped. That's somebody said that to me okay I didn't come up with that. I told her to go to a prayer line. But if you have that kind of a mindset, you're like, yeah, it seems like only, all oh, they like guys that I just don't like this stuff. You, you, you have to understand. The reason why God wants to work on you is because there's something in you that's a magnet that attracts. You attract who you are, not what you want. And so when you're going through waiting, God is working. 
God removes this, God removes that, God fixes that and then the people who used to be attracted are no longer attracted and people are beginning to be attracted who are different begin to be drawn to you and your taste buds change. Your approach begins to change. If you know you the way you know you, would you marry you? Why would you want somebody else to do that? If you know you the way you know you, would you marry you? Mm -hmm. So that's why God wants to shape certain things. I always challenge young people that many of us walk into the relationships with high expectations, low preparation. Do the math. Anything that's between that is frustration. If your expectation is and you're a young man, you're like man I want her to look like a Hollywood star. I want her to have the anointing of Catherine Kuhlman, the heart of Mother Teresa, to cook like my mom, have as many kids as my grandma. But you yourself, jobless, don't have a prayer life, have nothing running in your life except your mouth. Nothing. And you're like, I just want... I see the men who have only mouth running, raise their hands up. Praise God. Amen. I already see you. Praise God. If you walk into marriage relationship with expectations on this, but your preparation is on this. Preparation and expectation has to be on around the same level. And that's how we avoid frustration. All kinds of problems in our relationships. Because we're prepared. And because our expectations are realistic and reasonable. If you are a young person in this room today and you're not married, I want to declare something over you. Can we do that? And so um, you can just, just, you can just stretch your hands toward me. I'm just going to declare. If you're, if you're single, you're not married, just stretch your hand like this. I'm just going to declare this over you. Okay. I'm just declaring that this year will be the year I'm believing God for you to have dates and better dates. And if you agree, say amen brides and grooms come on amen proposals weddings and re and revival babies after the wedding remember favorable glances taxes and wedding dresses interests and commitments hand squeezes returned rings and honeymoons wives and spouses Debts paid off. <laughs> Nerves decrease. Courage increased. I thank you Lord for meeting all of our romantic needs. That I may find the one and only partner to build your kingdom and expand the church of Jesus Christ. And somebody say Amen. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, Click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.